welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at coloured pencil. I'm working on a piece of pastel matte paper in white by Claire Fontaine and the piece of paper I'm just putting over the project now is a piece of glassine and that's also by the company Claire Fontaine. The pencils I'm using today are by Karen Dash and they're called Luminance and I'll say right the way that this set of Luminance pencils was sent to me by Karen Dash but that's because I've worked with them for the past 10 years demonstrating. So the video isn't sponsored, the pencils were just sent to me by Karen Dash. So all the opinions in this video are my own. Um, yeah, so that's great. So the background on this piece I've already done in soft pastels and for that I used the pan pastels and I have other videos on my YouTube channel explaining how I apply pan pastels if you'd like to take a look. I would add a pop-up uh, card but the pop-up cards on YouTube don't seem to be working at the moment so there's no point in adding them. Um, the piece of paper is taped to a board with acid-free washi tape. And the reason there's a piece of black acid-free washi tape running down the left-hand side is so that I can use that when evaluating the contrast in my painting. When you haven't already got any darks in your painting, it's easy not to go dark enough. So by having a piece of black tape to one side, I can reference the darks against that and the lights against the white of the paper. It's just something to keep in mind that you might find useful when you're creating your artworks. Back to the piece. So with coloured pencil, especially the wax based ones such as Luminance, they're very opaque, they're very soft and very blendable. And at the moment what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to cover up the tooth of the paper so the little white flecks of the paper that are showing through. Coloured pencil is a very slow medium and I know when watching YouTube videos the projects that we see on there, they seem so quick, but you've got to take into account that all the videos are sped up. So it does take a long time to actually cover the tooth of the paper. This has been sped up to 150%. Uh, what you can't see is that I'm actually going in with tiny circles. So I've sharpened my pencil uh, using a mechanical pencil sharpener. And I'll have that pencil sharpener in the description below if you're interested in getting one for yourself. So I start off with a quite a fine point on the pencil, working in small circles. This allows the pencil tip to place pigment right into the tooth of the paper. Now obviously with coloured pencil you don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too quickly because once it fills and there's nothing else to grip the pencil, you won't be able to apply any more colour. But using a light hand and applying several coats of colour, several layers of colour, you can build a rich tone. So I'm working light to dark at the minute, so light tones to dark tones, and just working in the direction in which the feathers on the head of the penguin fall. So this is a Humboldt penguin, and I photographed him at the Welsh Mountain Zoo uh, two years ago now. Um, this piece will be copyrighted to me because it is something I'll be making prints from and selling in the future but I'll have links below to two websites that's pixabay.com and unsplash.com you'll be able to pop over there pick yourself up a reference image from there if you'd like to give uh, a penguin a going coloured pencil. So I've just fast forwarded a little bit there because it's much the same. It's one colour throughout the top of the head at the moment, um, very light layers and then additional la layers to darken the colour. Now I've gone in with a slightly darker tone, it's a sort of a burgundy tone that we're using at the moment and it's just to apply a few more darks. So to get the roundness on the head, I applied more layers to the left and to the right near the beak, just to give the head a little bit of shape. But we'll come back to it later with more darks and we'll apply some lights on top. That's the best thing about the wax-based pencils. Because they're more opaque, you can um, apply lights over the dark. Obviously, the lights are not going to be as brilliant um, 
in colour and lightness as they would be if they were just used on their own. They're going to be semi-transparent, so some of the dark will show through, but they're opaque enough to do the job. And I do advise you, if you're looking to um, purchase any coloured pencils, instead of buying a whole set, because they can work out quite expensive, the professional pencils, is just to buy a few colours that you think you'd like to have a play with, because they're all open stock. The luminance are open stock. Um, the Polychromos, that's by Faber-Castell, they're open stock, that's a brilliant uh, pencil to get. The Derwent Light Fast, they're open stock. So if you do want to have a go with coloured pencil and you don't want to buy a whole set because you don't know if you're going to like them or not, then I do suggest just picking up a few open stock colours, the ones that you think um, you're going to like, whether they're botanical colours or wildlife colours and just have a play around with them on d different types of paper. You can use um, hot press watercolour paper. Cold press watercolour paper can be used but the texture is sometimes quite hard to fill with a coloured pencil. Sandpaper, sanded art paper and obviously a pastel paper can be used on the textured side such as Canson Mine Tents. Okay back to the penguin. So I've just left the top of the head as it is because as I said we'll go back with other colours and we'll darken the darks and put some highlights on there as well. But at the minute I'm just interested in getting the white of the paper covered up. Um, I think a lot of artists will agree with me that the battle at the very beginning of a painting is just to get all the white covered up and by doing so I'm pulling in more darks more um, and some lights as well such as this one that's going in which is a lilac -y colour and just to get the shape of the head so that's all I'm looking for at the minute no detail as such at the moment we're just filling the tooth of the paper covering up the white of the paper getting the markings in and getting the shape of the head in if you can hear any weird breathing in the background it's my dog she's laying on the sofa beside me so she's been out for a walk and she's um, just going to sleep. So she might, you might hear some snoring in a minute. Oh, that was a sneeze and it wasn't from me. It was from Sky. Okay, back to the back to the drawing. So yeah, as I said, there's some wonderful photographs. If you're looking for a reference photograph of a penguin over on unsplash.com and pixabay.com, there's hundreds of photos and they're free to download and they're copyright free so you can use them from, for your artwork, you can sell your originals or make prints um, so that's all good. Obviously with the lockdown at the moment everybody's finding it hard to get um, out to zoos and safari parks and things so the next best thing is these wonderful websites that have been set up for, for the public to use which is great. Now, round the eye, I'm just applying a little bit of this pink now because of the, the flesh tones that are around the eye before the feathered areas begin. So we're just going to get that pink in now. If you struggle to keep any areas of your paper white, um, for instance, if there's a marking where there's little white highlights, you can actually go in on white paper with a white coloured pencil, rub it in quite hard, that, so that'll fill the tooth and burnish the tooth of the paper slightly. That means flatten the tooth of the paper slightly. And then that part of the paper will be hard to cover up with anything else. Uh, thus, it'll retain the whites in your, in your project. So if there was a highlight in the eye you wanted to keep white, pop a bit of white in there before you apply anything else. And if anything else does go over that white area, it won't go too dark. And also, coloured pencils, if you're very, very light-handed when you put the layers on, you can actually lift some of it off with a putty rubber. So if you do make any errors, um, don't worry, because everything can be rectified. Go in there with a rubber and just lift the colour out. Regarding getting an original sketch the preliminary sketch down before you start applying colour. I do have two videos available on my website at the moment on how to create an initial sketch if that's something you're interested in. One of them is sketching a squirrel 
traditionally and the other is sketching a camel portrait uh, digitally but either way digitally or traditionally I sketch the same so if you want to sort of stay, take a step back from uh, putting colour onto a project and you want to get to grips with the uh, initial drawing then take a look at those. I hope everybody's keeping well and keeping creative. We've not had any snow here yet. It's the 2nd of February and we've still got our Christmas tree up though so that's brilliant. I'm a Christmas addict so that's fine by me. It's twinkly lights behind me at the minute are lovely. Okay so we've applied the pink and the light burgundies and a little bit of a light lilac now we're going back in with a burgundy colour again and what I suggest is when you do attempt a new project a new subject that you haven't um, approached before really really pay attention to your reference image you ask what you know general public what colour a penguin is and nine times out of ten they'll just say black and white because it's you know they've not really taken much notice of looking at the coloration on a penguin but obviously if they're in water some of the water reflections are going to be on the sheen of the feathers so you can actually mirror some of the colors from their surroundings onto this onto the subject so you in this case sort of emerald greens and blues you could reflect onto the feathers to make them look like they're in the water and not just you know cut and pasted on top of the water as it were so here we're just getting a little bit of shape a uh, little bit of definition into the feathers now if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below I do uh, go back through the comments and check to see if there's any questions being asked and I will answer them and if you have any suggestions of future videos please pop those in the comments below too and if you if you're enjoying this video so far then please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet another subscription would be great it's all free and I'm truly blessed by you all that have already subscribed it's wonderful I'm feeling feeling loved feeling the love <laughs> okay so now we're going back in with a darker color now I believe this one is chocolate that I'm using now a chocolate color so still not with the darkest of the darks but get in there this is a, a very dark color and in actual fact it might be the very the darkest burgundy I can't see from here but go in with the darks um, to where they are on the reference image sorry I'm trying I'm just looking through my list then to make sure I'm not forgetting to to mention anything and also I'm referring back to that black strip of washi tape as well just to make sure my darks are actually going dark enough because what I did was when I looked at my reference image before starting this piece I made sure that there were actually some darks as dark as that piece of black masking tape and there are tonal values they're, 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 the darks are, the, are as dark as that and that's why I put that piece of tape there so because now if that piece of tape wasn't there I think sometimes it can be a bit worrying that you're not going dark enough and as you can see I've <laughs> fast forwarded it because it, it really is this you know much of the same in layering you just keep layering till you get to your darkest of darks and and obviously that makes the lights pop as well so the little area um, under his chin is slightly shaded with some of the green from the water so the white area under his chin going towards his beak I've just put a little bit of the green that I used on the water not the pastel but um, a corresponding colour in the pencil because white is very very rarely white in nature white is a reflective colour and it reflects the colours that are in the surroundings hence a little bit of white on the stripe that's going down his head um, has got a little bit of green in and the, the white underneath his chin has got a little bit of the green in too you could have put a little bit of blue in or something like that and obviously in the water the reflections if you if you're thinking of doing um, 
a reflection of an animal in water don't just mirror the animal upside down because that really isn't how reflections look unless I think sometimes when maybe a photographer has taken a photograph of a bird at a reflection pool their little pools of water set up by the photographers just for that reason of getting reflective uh, reflective photography of subjects sometimes the reflected image can look as clear and as pristine as the subject itself but that's very rarely and that's not really a natural setting in a natural setting water has movement and the movement disrupts the reflection um, such as this the reflection of this penguin so the pinks and the pinks from around the beak and a little bit of yellow in the beak the the blacks the whites the burgundies the blues are all in the reflections in the water but it's broken up by the movement of the water so that is something to keep in mind if in doubt just pop on to um, the web search such as google and just type in you know reflections and just see a natural look for natural settings with reflections as opposed to man-made setups with reflections and and just take a note of the difference so here we're now on the the wing of the bird the flipper of the bird and we're just putting in some blues that will be reflected from the from its surroundings so obviously the the feathers on the bird aren't blue but the reflector the, the reflection on the feathers of the surroundings um, creates the color blue and it's the same thing it's building up from your lights to your darks and paying attention to reference image so I'm sorry about the movement of the board but with this piece I was working upright against the easel and it's I must admit it's a, a preferable way of working for me I'm in the process of filming a red squirrel in watercolour pencil for this channel and at the moment I'm having to work nearly flat and it's not really the an ideal position for me because I'm that used to working either sitting at an easel or preferably standing at an easel so yeah sorry about the movement of the board and it does look like I'm pressing down hard and in actual fact I'm not I've just got a wobbly board at the moment I need to tighten it all up I hope the audio is okay with this video. Uh, I think I've got all the audio situation sorted out now. But the pop-up cards, I'm um, having problems getting the pop-up cards to show. Uh, so I did a, a Google search and it seems I'm not on my own. There's a lot of YouTubers that are having problems now uh, with YouTube not showing pop-up cards. So if I get that sorted out, I'll let you know in the future. I'll carry on adding the pop-up cards. I don't think you're going to be able to see them because I've not been able to view them yet. They show up on my studio, on my dashboard, where where the videos are created, edited and uploaded. But um, So in all intents and purposes, the pop-up cards are there. They're just not visible once the um, video goes live. Okay, so in with the darks getting a little bit dark as we go along. I do zoom in in a bit so you'll get a, a little bit of um, an in-depth look at what I'm actually doing. So just keep looking at your reference image. I can't stress that enough. Especially for things such as this, it's just something you don't see every day. Sometimes your mind can play tricks on you and you know you think you you know what this is going to look like but when but when you actually do look at your reference image um, nine times out of ten it's completely different what, to what you imagined um, yeah I've got to admit I've not stood for hours looking at the underneath of a penguin's wing stroke flipper at this little guy he was lovely he was just floating round in the pool all the others were having a swim and and the water was moving round the pool and he was just bobbing along so I videoed him as well as photographing him uh, yeah, and he was just preening for a good 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes lovely to watch very relaxing to watch as well and my eldest daughter's favorite bird so yeah a little bit more working in the little detailed areas under there now 
just looking at the timeline we're 20 minutes in so we'll be zooming in in a couple of minutes time and get a better look then so one lady has asked for hedgehog in pastels so that's something I'm looking at doing in the next couple of weeks okay so we are zoomed in now now as you can see I've put a pink undertone on the underneath of that wing and now very very gently um, and always finding a sharper edge on the pencil by turning the pencil just applying little markings that just um, let the viewer believe there's feathers there obviously the feathers are nothing like um, a non-aquatic bird they sit very flat, uh, very tight together, obviously to form a waterproof barrier. And you can see the detailing on the beak as well, while we're zoomed in here, and the eye. The eye is very, very simple on this. Because it was so small, um, just popped it in very quickly with just a couple of colours. Looking at the details now. Uh, from the reference image I can see there's just a scattering of dark markings underneath the wing so the way it's already on is I didn't want the darks to go on too dark straight away obviously you can build up the layers over white until it really goes dark just takes a little um, bit more of layering than if you'd applied the dark straight away onto the white paper because obviously when you apply the dark pigment over a lighter pigment the two are going to wash together blend together to begin with but you can always add additional layers to make it go darker obviously it's not the same with colored pencils on the reverse uh, if you've already gone over something with say a dark burgundy or a black and then you want to put white down the white will never be as um, brilliant as vivid as it would have been had you just applied it on its own straight onto the paper. But there are ways of getting around that and there's a product uh, called Texture, fi not Texture Fixative <gasps> Oh it's by... I'll, ha I'll put a link in the description below, there's a product uh, made by, oh crumbs I can't think of the name of it now uh, bear with me, I'll go and fetch it and then I'll, I'll add it to this. I'm back again. Okay, it's by a company called Brish and Pencil and it's titanium white and coloured pencil touch up texture. It's two products, you mix them together um, to the consistency of sort of cream and then you can apply it with a brush let it dry, it takes about 10 minutes, it looks white when it's applied and then you can go back over it. So if you make a, a mistake you can use that, pop a little bit of that on your paper, wait for it to dry and then go back over it. But I'll explore that with you in another video. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that waffling. Oh, it's awful isn't it when you just forget the name of something. Oh dear. Okay, back in. So now we're just going on with the, the darks again. I think I am using black now. I believe it's a carbon black. And I'm actually pushing it up into the white that I've already brought down. So I'm pushing against the um, pigment that I've already applied. Not that it makes much difference on this size. Because we're working quite small now. If you're having problems uh, maintaining a point on your pencil, then I suggest using a mechanical pencil sharpener to take it to a fine point and then rubbing it on sandpaper. The white I'm now popping on is a Derwent Chinese white drawing pencil. Obviously when you're going over darker pigment with a lighter pigment, it is going to pick some of the darker pigment up. So you might need to clean your pencil. Uh, as I'm doing on a little piece of tissue. So just popping in, getting those highlights in now. Just the little finishing touches that, that make a difference really because 
when you're working on something that has black or white in it save your your white to to the end and your black to the end because less is more if you put a lot of white in then it loses the impact and if you put a lot of black in that also loses the impact in actual fact a lot of black can make an image look flat so i never really tend to apply black on its own i always overlay another color such as burgundies or reddish browns are nice but uh, and with white, because white is reflective in nature, um, just keep the white for the lightest of your highlights. So I hope you can see how having the piece of black tape to the left hand side has helped with the um, getting the tonal values correct on this piece. Another thing people do, I don't personally do it, but you can do it, is squint uh, to see if your tonal values are, are correct. So if you squint, you just see your contrasts. And there he is, he's all complete. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Sorry about stumbling over <laughs> my words earlier on, forgetting the name of Brush and Pencil Company. Um, and I hope you have a go at doing a project of a penguin yourself. Yep, feel free to look on those two websites for a reference image. That's pixabay.com and unsplash.com if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe and if you have any questions or would like to leave um, a comment below then please feel free so until next time i'm going back to the easel now I've got to crack on with this red squirrel in watercolor pencil and i'll see you all soon so take care bye bye